Hey, welcome to the big board. And uh, it's Kevin here. A little bit distracted this morning because we've had uh, cats ravaging boards. And uh, so I've got some other smaller S&T games set up and the, the cat has been uh, having its fun with them. So I've had to kind of reconstruct things. And in part of that process, uh, my goal today was to kind of get through Moscow 41 and, and finish up my one and a half play. Uh, had a lot of fun with it. I wanted to give you a quick summary of the game and not of the gameplay per se or the results or whatever the case may be, but just a, of my, my first impressions of the game. And, you know, I've got to admit, I've got some pretty significant bias because I really like Emanuele. And uh, I, I think this is probably a, another evolution in his uh, uh, evolving skill set as a game designer. And I think he has got some very smart ideas in here that really hew uh, or attempt to hew to the the history that is given uh, in, or is presented in any given situation that he models. So first up, with all the components, they're fantastic. There are uh, probably probably everything you need is here, barring perhaps uh, a means of keeping a cumulative track of uh, total. Soviet losses because uh, units that are lost go back into the bag if they were not out of supply and you, you've got to keep a mental note or, or use some sort of uh, tracking device to do that and that's the only thing that I found that was missing. Uh, the, you're situated as the overall commander of multiple armies and it's your job to move those headquarters and their related uh, divisions and corps to try and capture Moscow by the end of December uh, and or capture the seven victory locations. You capture the seven victory locations, it's an automatic win. Otherwise you total up the VP locations on the map. So, you know, there's one here for Leningrad, which is right there. Uh, that's a, a specific track that you play on uh, to abstract out the Leningrad campaign. And then there's Voronezh down here on the left. And I've got the map folded up and Moscow and Tula and Kursk and all that here. So uh, you you were definitely put in a difficult position to start with. You've got lots of capability. You need to make sure you take advantage of all the specific rules that are available to you in terms of blitzing as the Germans and using Zhukov as the Soviets to maximize the capabilities of your forces. Obviously, armor and infantry are represented differently, and air is uh, represented in the game through uh, a number of uh, discs that can be applied to a given battle. And uh, they have limitations as well, and there's uh, flak and all that sort of good stuff. So a lot of uh, uh, detail without minutia of rules is represented in the game at a, at a nice level of detail for an area movement block-based game. So I thoroughly enjoyed exploring the, the opening moves. I actually set the game up probably three times, uh, just kind of working out my opening gambit as the Germans and what the Soviets could do in reply to that in the first turn. So the July turn, there's a lot of, uh, there are a lot of choices that need to be made to survive into the fall. Uh, that said, you also I also was making some rules errors, and I could see that could see that because the Germans had pretty much conquered the board after three or four impulses. So clearly, I had done some things wrong. So I went back and had a look at the rules and worked out where I had gone wrong. Uh, the The rule, the only thing that I find uh, a continual niggle for me, it's not an issue or a concern per se, is you know the rule book is well laid out, large font, easy to find sections. But the challenge is, and it's also laid out in gameplay, gameplay mode, right? Uh, gameplay sequence. But because there's this introductory stuff that talks about movement and how to win the game and supply sources and uh, the terrain and all that sort of business, that some of that is repeated 
you know, so these basic definitions, right? Movement point costs and whatnot. Some of that is repeated in the rules in other places, and some of it is only specifically in certain sections. At least that's the impression I got as I'm going through this. So then you go through this uh, sequence of play, which is all pretty standard block game stuff. You have a logistics phase that's very important. Then you go through these impulses and you, you run through the impulses as many times as you have stars on your HQs. Uh, and then you'll get to this final phase where you may uh, pass or not pass as the case may be. And then uh, you roll into the next impulse and kind of go, go through that or you end your turn and then uh, go through the next turn's logistics phase. So it's a pretty straightforward game, but you do end up doing a little bit of backwards and forwards with the rules. So I, I kind of like to see someone do a, a rules summary for this and uh, help you kind of clean things up so that you're only looking in one place one time uh, to get squared, get squared away. Now that may just be me and I'm a, I'm a, I'm a dork and I don't get it, but I, I had minor issues with the rules. I had to ask three or four questions online just to make sure I was doing it right. Cause I don't, I'm not going to be playing this 20 times in the next couple of weeks. This will be it actually for uh, a while until I can get it on the table opposed at the, at the game store. So <clears throat> at the Emerald Tavern or whatever it's called. So, uh, what am what I trying to say? Oh, now, so when we're talking about components also, this great summary chart, you can basically play off of this game, off this chart, uh, other than a few little specifics. And I, I leaned on this heavily uh, during my gameplay. I feel like the components are just so freaking awesome, it's ridiculous. You know, there you know, these uh, tracking charts and replacement pools and uh, the game, uh, I think the the, the limited edition comes with two maps, so you get this mount, beautiful mounted map, and then there's also a folding map down the bottom here as well that you can use to lug around to play play with your, your buddies. Uh, two sets of uh, counters or blocks. Uh, you know the the kind of deluxe edition has these icon style counters that you can use. I prefer the NATO symbols, but you know you've got literally if you buy the uh, expanded edition you have two copies of the game because you could put these stickers on these uh, alternate blocks and uh, you know you've got two copies of the game basically for the price of one which is nice some some other extra stickers and stuff i'm not sure what i'm supposed to do with these but they're cute so all in all i would say if you're looking to get into war games or get into block based games and want to play a game that's not just the standard I've got four pips and I rotate it three times and my guy dies. If you want to play something that's a little more thought provoking and makes you think about making choices a little more than perhaps some other block game designers, then this is certainly a noble effort and it's absolutely one of the best uh, block games from Vento Nuovo games that I've played. I think still think Blocks in the East is probably the creme de la creme. Uh, despite people's uh, issues with some of the artwork. But this is a uh, beautifully produced, wonderful, uh, wonderful gameplay. Very, very tense. Lots of hard choices are being made. And uh, you find yourself as the Soviets wondering if you're going to hold on. It's a nail biter. And as the Germans, you're thinking, oh my gosh, how the hell am I going to get all the way to Moscow or to Tula because I... Uh, I just don't have enough headquarter points to go around. I, I can't move all my guys. I have to make hard choices at every single stage of the game. And so if you're looking for something that's a, a little thought provoking and a little challenging, then this is a great, uh, a great introduction to war gaming and to block gaming in particular. So uh, just a really enjoyed this. Uh, like I said, uh, try it out anyway. Try it for yourself. I've only played it, like I said, one and a half times. I, am, I reserve the right to change my opinion on the game, but uh, I certainly was very enamored with it uh, over the last uh, four or five days that I've been goofing around with it. All right, guys, uh, all the best. I hope you enjoyed the, the look at this. Uh, it's not a review. It's my first impressions. And uh, take that as it may be and uh, go give it a try. Talk to you soon.